Hello world! Today I'm going to talk about how to construct the natural numbers from the Peano axioms and prove a few different properties like commutativity and associativity. This is going to be the first video in a series constructing the real numbers, so let's jump right in. So we want to define the natural number numbers in a kind of abstract way, not to be intentionally confusing or whatever, but so that we can actually avoid being tied down to a specific representation. You know, we have the conventional base 10, but we want some sort of definition that allows us to use binary or ternary or any base or any like way that we could potentially represent the natural numbers. So we could use symbols that aren't 0 through 10 or whatever. <coughs> So here's the first of the Peano axioms, and the first axiom just basically gives us at least one number that's guaranteed to exist, and we're going to call that natural number zero. Now, I say zero, but we could, of course, put anything that we want here. We just have one number, which we'll call zero in this series, to just say that's the first natural number. The second axiom is that if n is a natural number, then we can apply this function called the successor function, which we'll denote by having a plus plus on the end, is also a natural number. And we call n plus plus the successor of n. So if I have a natural number, I can apply this function and get yet another natural number. The third axiom seems kind of confusing at first, but it says for all natural numbers, its successor cannot be zero. So in other words, we cannot loop back around to zero. Zero has no successor. It is going to be the first natural number. So three guarantees this. The fourth axiom says that if n++ equals n++, then it must be the case that n actually equals n. This seems kind of confusing at first, but it's really just saying that the successor function is injective, which makes sense. One natural number should have like two successors. Um, <clears throat> and the last axiom states that if a statement about <clears throat> the natural numbers is true for 0, which we denote by p of 0, and the statement being true for n implies that it's true for its successor, which we denote by p of n implying p of n++, plus plus, then the statement p of n is true for every natural number. This is just saying that induction works. And a lot of these proofs are going to be very induction focused, so that'll come up a lot. And so if we have two natural numbers, the first thing that we might try to do with them is add. But we're going to add in kind of what seems like an obtuse way at first. We're going to define addition inductively. So if we have two natural numbers, n and m, then 0 plus m equals m. This makes sense. However, to add n plus plus to m, and here I'm going to say that order matters for right now, because from this definition, it's not going to be very clear that addition is in fact commutative. So if we have n++ plus plus on the left and add it to m, we are going to define it, this addition, to be n++ plus plus in parentheses plus m equals parentheses around this whole thing, n plus m, successor of that. Now you might think, but yeah, this 
n plus m, how do I do that? Well, this is kind of the confusing part because you kind of have to use recursion to solve this. So to take out some of the confusion, it really helps to do some examples. So just from the definition, 0 plus m equals m. So this shouldn't be troubling. Now for 1 plus m is where things get kind of confusing. So if we notice that 1 is the successor of 0, then we can write this 1 plus m as 0 plus 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 m. Now from the definition of addition, we can kind of like move this parentheses to the outside and the plus plus, and we have 0 plus m in parentheses, successor of that. However, we know 0 plus m from up here is just m. So this whole thing is just the successor of m, which we would intuitively guess, because 1 plus m, if I want to add those together, I should just walk forward from m by 1. Now if we want to do 2 plus m, we're going to do much of the same thing. We'll notice that 2 is just the successor of 1, so we can write this as 1 plus 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 m, and then using the definition of addition, we can move this parentheses to the outside and the successor. So we have this right here is equal to in parentheses 1 plus m successor of that. And if we look back up here, instead of saying, oh, well, 1 is 0 plus plus, blah, 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 because uh, that would add another step to our recursion. So what we'll do is just cleverly note that 1 plus m, we've already figured that out. It's just m plus plus. So we replace this by m plus plus, and 2 plus m is just the successor of the successor of m, which is also pretty intuitive because we just need to hop forward two steps. <laughs> so from this definition, it's not defined symmetrically, so it's not obvious that addition is commutative, and our definition says nothing about hinting at associativity, so we need to prove these properties. They're not just something that we can take for granted. So we'll first prove that addition is commutative. And to do this, we're going to need to prove one or two lemmas first. The first lemma just states that for all natural numbers, n plus 0 is equal to n. Now you might say, well, that was in the definition. But it's actually not. We said that in the definition, 0 plus n is equal to n. So the first step in proving that addition is commutative, well, we need to make sure that we can at least flip that part of the definition. So we're going to do this by induction. And whenever we prove something by induction, we need to prove the base case then prove that it being true for n implies n plus 1. So to this n, if we note that 0 plus 0 is 0 by definition of addition, then our base case is taken care of. Now we want to suppose that n plus 0 is equal to n for some natural number. So now we want to prove that n plus 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 0 would be equal to the same thing, so n plus plus. So to do this, right here, we're going to use the definition of addition, right here, to say that this is equal to nothing but n plus 0, in parentheses, plus plus, and our induction hypothesis is n plus 0 is equal to n. So this right here is nothing more than n++, which is what we want. So by induction, 
n plus 0 is equal to n for all natural numbers. And that concludes our first little lemma. The second lemma has to deal with basically um, the definition of addition is kind of kind of involves that like first number like if n plus 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 m that's equal to n plus m in parentheses plus plus we kind of just want to flip that so to do that it's going to require a little bit more work but it's the same principle we're going to imply induction on n so we're going to keep m fixed and we need to prove the base case first so for n equals 0, we would have 0 plus m plus plus is equal to m plus plus. And why is that? Well, that's because of the definition of addition. We have that 0 plus n is equal to n. So the base case is pretty easy. And 0 plus m, successor of that, is equal to m plus plus, because 0 plus m is equal to m. So this right here is equal to this, which means that our base case is taken care of. Now, what we want to do is suppose, remember, we're inducting on n, so we're going to suppose that n plus m plus plus is equal to n plus m in parentheses plus plus for some natural number. Now, if we want to prove that n implies n plus 1, well, that would mean n plus 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 m plus plus. Well, we need to show that this right here is equal to this. So <clears throat> what we're going to kind of do is just play around with each one separately and show that they're equal. So our first step, so we have this right here, n plus 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 n plus plus. Well, by the definition of addition, that's equal to n plus n plus plus, in parentheses, plus plus. Now, this is where we use our inductive hypothesis, because our inductive hypothesis is that this, which appears right here, is nothing more than n plus m plus plus. And so, if everything's right, then this should also be equal to this. And we can simply see that from the definition of addition because n plus 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 m is just equal to n plus m plus plus. And then we already had this on the outside. So this right here and this right here are equal. And so the lemma holds for all n and m by induction. And you can kind of see why you would need these lemmas because they're basically the backwards version of our addition uh, definition of addition. We defined it kind of like adding things on the left. Uh, now, these two lemmas kind of tell you you can do it on the right as well. So now, all we need to do is finally show that addition is commutative. So, in a precise sense, for all n and m, we have that n plus m is equal to m plus n. So, we're going to use induction on n, keep m fixed, <coughs> and like always, we need to make sure the base case is satisfied. So, 0 plus m is equal to m by definition of addition, but it's also equal to m plus 0 by the first lemma. The first lemma just said that 0 on the right just gave you the same thing. <coughs> so, 
That's our base case. Now we're going to suppose that n plus m is equal to m plus n for some natural number. And we now need to show that it holds for the successor of n. So this is where our second limit is going to come in use. So n plus 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 m is equal to n plus m plus plus. This holds from the definition of addition. Now we get to use our inductive hypothesis, which states that we can commute these two. So n plus m is equal to m plus n, in parentheses plus plus. Then our second lemma says that we can move this successor to the right. So this is equal to m plus n plus plus. And so now we can see that this addition right here also commutes. So by induction, addition is commutative, like we would hope for. So the proof that addition uh, was commutative was a little bit tricky, but luckily the associative proof isn't as bad. So <clears throat> the statement of associativity is that if I have a, b, and c in the natural numbers, then a plus b parentheses plus c equals a plus parentheses b plus c. Now, once again, the definition of addition does not directly imply this, so it's definitely something that we need to prove rigorously. And what we're going to do, as per usual, is use induction, and we're going to induct on A and keep the other two things, so B and C, constant. So, as per usual, the base case a equals 0, we're going to have 0 plus b, in parentheses, plus c. Well, this right here is equal to b, by definition of addition. So this thing right here is just equal to b plus c. Now if we look on here, 0 plus, parentheses, b plus c, by definition of addition, this right here <coughs> is what's left. So we can see that the base case holds, because this right here and this right here are equal to each other, and the base case is satisfied. Now for the slightly trickier part, uh, we need to suppose that a plus b parentheses plus c is associative, so I can bring the parentheses over here for some natural number a. And we need to show that it holds for the successor of A. So we're going to start with this right here and eventually show that we can move the parentheses right here over to the B plus C. So to do this, the first thing we're going to do is use the definition of addition to write this as parentheses on the outside a plus b parentheses plus plus, then plus c. So we still haven't managed to get the parentheses on the other side. However, we can use the definition of addition again to move this plus plus to the outside. And we have big parentheses on the outside, a plus b parentheses plus c. Now, still, we haven't succeeded in moving our parentheses around. This is, where our this is where our inductive hypothesis comes into play. Because remember, this sum right here is associative. So, what we can do is, right here, we can move the parentheses to the B plus C. And so that's what we do. And we can do it because our inductive hypothesis... And now, we just go backwards with the definition of addition and put this plus plus back to the A, and we have exactly what we want. So by induction, addition is 
also associative. <clears throat> so yet another property that we just kind of like intuitively know is true, but it actually takes quite a bit of work to prove. So the very last property that I want to prove is called the cancellation property. And it seems uh, like something that's kind of obvious and kind of like not very profound, but it's actually going to help us define subtraction. And subtraction is going to help us define the integers. The integers will help us define the rational numbers. The rational numbers will help us define the real numbers. So it's actually a stepping stone in the right direction to building the real numbers. And the cancellation property is pretty, sim pretty simple. It says that if we have two natural numbers, a and b, if a plus b equals a plus c, then b equals c. Now this seems kind of like obvious, you're just like, oh, subtract on the left. However, we can't subtract because all we can do is add for now. So this will take careful proof and we're going to imply induction on A, keeping B and C fixed. So as per usual, the base case, we would have 0 plus B equals 0 plus C. And that's definitely going to imply B equals C, because the definition of addition implies this is equal to B, and this is equal to C. So our base case works. Now, for the slightly trickier part, we're going to suppose that A plus B equals A plus C implies B equals C for some natural number A. And we need to somehow prove that it holds for the successor of A. So in other words, we get to assume that successor of A plus B equals successor of A plus C. And we want to show somehow that implies B equals C. So what we're going to do is kind of work with both of these sides separately. So successor of a plus b by definition of addition is equal to a plus b successor. Then for the second half of the equality we have successor of a plus c by definition of addition is equal to a plus c successor. Now remember these two things are equal. So these are equal to each other as well. So if a plus b successor is equal to a plus c successor, this is where we have to remember that the successor function is actually injective. So if these two things are equal to each other, a plus b has to equal a plus c. And this is where we get to use our inductive hypothesis. Because our inductive hypothesis, remember, tells us that if these two things are equal to each other, B must in fact equal C. So that's exactly what we're looking for. And by induction, the cancellation property will hold for all natural numbers. So these properties definitely took a lot of work. Uh, but um, with induction, a lot of them aren't too bad to prove. So next time, what I want to do is define an order on n and proving various properties like the trichotomy principle. And hopefully we'll be able to also define multiplication and proving well-known properties like commutativity and associativity for those operations as well. So that's all I got for this video. Be sure to like, comment, any questions you have, and subscribe for more content.